is Kalia Monique. First name's Kalia, middle name's Monique, and today I actually have a book review for y'all. Yay! We're all so excited. I'm excited. I'm I'm just I'm so ready. So first and foremost, the book I will be talking about today is Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iriyeme. Yep, I'm pretty sure I did the last name right. Iyemide. Iyemide. Oh, I'm sorry. Frida Abika Iyemide. Basically, her name is beautiful and my peasant English tongue can't get it out correctly. But put some respect on her name because she is an artiste, okay? Let's get into it. Basically, yes, I do have two copies of Ace of Spades. No, this isn't a giveaway. I want both of these copies. These are my babies. I'm not giving them up. I have the U.S. hardcover of it. And look at this beautiful black excellence on the cover. I, Of course I need it. Look at, the, look at them. Look, look at them. They are so beautiful. There is no way I wasn't going to have them. This is my baby. This is actually the copy I annotated and loved while reading. I... I love this freaking book. And then I also got the Illumicrate edition. And what I really like about this one is, you see this beautiful spade right there? Yeah, love her. But also, it's signed. And I just, I love this book so much. Ask my friends, like literally I've been raving about this book for days now. Every time we talk about, or talking to each other, we're not even talking about the book, but every time we're like talking, I'm just hugging these two books because I love them and they're my babies and I just, I'm so happy. So yeah, let's get into this book talk. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a book talk instead of a book review because I'm gonna be honest, I didn't write down my thoughts because I just there's no matter how organized I am I'm not gonna be organized enough so I'm just gonna I'm just talk okay and so handy dandy book that I actually annotated I'm just gonna be looking at this and falling in love let's let me first start off with the spoiler free portion of this um book talk and then I hate that book talk sounds like book talk like there was no different. <laughs> there was no difference in those two words, but bit book talk like with an L, you know. Clearly, you're on YouTube. We're not on TikTok. First spoiler free review of this amazing book is that it's amazing. Five stars. I gave it five stars. That's the only rating you can possibly give it. Don't even try me. No. Okay, it's a five star book. And if you haven't heard of Ace of Spades, Ace of Spades is about Chiamaka and Devon. They're both in their senior year of high school and they're the only two black kids at this private academy. All of a sudden, this anonymous source by, that goes by the name of Aces is sending their deepest, darkest secrets out into the entire school to read. Um, and let me tell you, they got some secrets. Ace of Spades is marketed as Get Out meets Gossip Girl. And if that doesn't make you want to read the book, who are you? If you aren't already amazed by that combination, I don't know what's wrong with you because how does one combine Gossip Girl with Get Out? This is how. And you, she did it so beautifully. Farida, put some respect on her name. Oh my goodness. I love the writing in this book and the vulnerability within this text. Like Chiamaka and Devon are both going through a lot in their lives and they're very separate experiences they're both very separate depictions of the black experience in America but they're both very valid and still includes quite a bit of trauma. Giamaka was determined she was a leader she knew her worth and was going to let the world know no matter what happened and that is so inspiring and beautiful getting the ability to read that part of her story as she's going through all the stuff that Aces is putting her through, as she's trying to like deal with her relationship with her father, which Chiamaka is half white and half Nigerian, I believe. Her mother is Nigerian. But yeah, so she's half white and half black and 
she's always gone to these private institutions. She's always been surrounded by predominantly white kids, which relatable. The way she's kind of dealt with that and her blackness as she's grown older is just amazing. And how her regular determination interacted with her interactions with aces was truly something astounding to witness. Like aces did everything in their power to break this young woman and Chiamaka still stood very strong and firm in her beliefs of her self and well that's not to say like aces wasn't getting to her because aces knew what to do to get to Chiamaka and Devon but for the most part I would say that Chiamaka remained true to her morals like even though she spent a lot of the time questioning them and questioning if she was worthy also devon as a character now that that's my baby first of all chiamaka and devon are both my little sister my little brother okay then my babies right there i love them so much and i love them for different reasons devon immediately captured my heart in this book he is such a soft and kind and caring black boy but also you can tell that like the environment he's always grown up around has impacted him and how he interacts with the world and how he tries to present as stronger and just like a loner. Like instead of letting people in, I'm just going to do what I need to to survive. And he survives through his music and it's truly beautiful. His love for his mother is very beautiful and I loved the I loved that Chiamaka was this like sciencey girl. She was all about logic and science and math. That was her thing. And Devon was the one that was all artistic and into music and his hopes were towards Juilliard and everything, whereas Chiamaka was aiming towards Yale. Well, how many times do you see that? How many times do you see the girl being the smart one and strong and powerful and set and determined in her ways and then how many times do you see uh, the guy being the artsy one add on to that the fact that they are black Farida just grab my heart and don't let it go clearly what she had my, she it was like she had a vice grip on my heart and was like you're not gonna get this back until you finish this book and then when she returned it to me it was broken love this book i absolutely loved that part of it the fact that one the normal roles that girls are given and boys are given was reversed for chiamaka and devon but also adding that extra layer of the fact that they were black made it so much more powerful i i grew up a black girl in america let me tell you all the ways people tried to discredit my greatness i am smart and i know i'm smart well i was very much more like chiamaka like i worked hard to get what i deserved and i was doing really great in my classes now let imposter syndrome go <laughs> make its rear its ugly head and that's where a lot of struggles for black girls in schools comes from when you're in like honors classes or in a private university and a more challenging curriculum even when you're doing well people will try to convince you that you're not they're you're gonna feel like you don't belong simply because you're black and everyone else in the room is white and so i loved that i got to re -ex witness that through tiamaka like i experienced it but to see it written out in another character was so impactful for me and it allowed me the opportunity to continue to reflect on like my life experiences and who I want to be in life so that was a great little therapeutic moment there but then also for Devon's story I love when black boys get to be soft I love when black boys get to be just kind I love he wasn't a tough boy by any means I think what might have people perceive him as like tough is simply the fact that he was more of a loner and he did he wasn't all that social but he was kind he was emotional he was affectionate towards his mother he 
was a soft boy and I love that about him he was also very strong like whereas Chiamaka has like the white picket fence and these grand estates all around her Devon has rundown homes and drug dealers and gangs all around him and just the way he was still able to be soft while also having his hard edges to protect himself I think was very beautiful and very amazingly crafted in this book. I saw myself in both Devon and Chiamaka and tear tears were shed. I'm not gonna lie. You will learn throughout this channel that a bit be crying. Miss Farida Abike Iemide I love you with my whole heart and soul. I would love to talk to you. I have so many thoughts on this book. I just want to give you your roses. So here is me giving you your roses. You are an amazing black girl and you did that. You did that, sis. I I don't even know you and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> um, congratulations on this amazing debut. Literally talk to a woman that will never see this, but literally... I I felt this book in my soul and just as she stated in her author's note for this book um Ace of Spades was a real therapeutic moment for her and as I read it it was a real therapeutic moment for me and I thank you for allowing me to have that. I wish I had vlogged my experience reading this book because I went through so much and again I just want to thank Farida Abika Ihimide for writing this novel um and yeah I, that's really all I want to say for the spoiler free section I'm sorry this one really wasn't in depth but literally every part that I truly loved about this book I cannot discuss without saying quotes and without talking about all my feelings please 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 read this book and if you are a teacher in schools if you're an English teacher in schools if you are a history teacher in schools this should be a part of your curriculum. This book, far greater than any book I've ever had to read in school. And it's absolutely necessary for you. This book covered every single aspect of blackness in America, what it is like to be a black person in America, which is astounding considering Farina Bikaimide is not from America. That just shows that they're very similar situations happening across the globe final note before we go into the spoiler section there will not be any chiamaka slander you will love her and devon she is that bitch. devon is that dude i don't do guys have one for saying he's that shit? because these two people i need them to exist in real life i mean they do exist in real life hell i'm one of them but I just never not love this book. I feel the pacing throughout this book was amazing. I have heard people say that the pacing at the end was very fast and rushed. Um, I don't know what y'all don't get about Get Out being the inspiration for this, but did am I the only one that watched Get Out? Was the ending of Get Out not rushed? It is a thriller. It is supposed to be rushed. Your heartbeat is supposed to be going crazy at the end. And when I tell you I thought I was about to go into cardiac arrest, this book, I have never seen a book be marketed better. This is Get Out meets Gossip Girl. I'm so proud. I, I'm so proud. I love this book. Five stars pick this book up. <laughs> oh shit, okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but I'm not okay. Uh, I just finished part two, part two. Yes, I finished part two. I'm not okay, I'm not okay, I'm not okay. Somebody can help me, I'm not okay. <sighs> deep breaths, deep breaths. I'm not okay. I want to cry. I'm not okay. <sighs> I 
I'm, you see, do you see this? I'm about to cry. I'm about, I'm, oh God, I'm not about to cry on camera though. So bye. All right. Yes, finally, I am here. I'm, I am ready. Okay, I am, I'm so ready. Spoiler section. I'm gonna go ahead and take off this dust jacket because <laughs> I'm gonna get up in this, okay? I want to start off with my favorite part of this book and it's that the writing of this book in particular it is very amazing it's a normal thriller but there are moments in this book that truly read like poetry let me go ahead and start with chapter seven for y'all chapter seven is from Devon's perspective and he goes it starts off this way I need you to know this this is this is the world I was in for chapter seven. In this home of worn leather sofas, tabletops with cracked edges, mismatched chairs, and exposed pipes, there is so much love. Even if that love is for a version of me that isn't real. I feel it whenever I stare at Ma in the morning as I eat my toast and she gets ready for her first job down at the local school where she cleans. I watch her confidently pray to God for answers before warming her oatmeal in the microwave poetry okay i finished my last piece of toast and i hug her from behind hoping it tells her everything i think about her i hope that if she finds out about the picture this hug reminds her that i am still me still someone who loves her clearly this is after aces re released the photo of devon kissing scotty but when i tell you that scene opened up and i said oh she a poet because what that is poetry You're telling me that did not capture you in this home of warm leather sofas tabletops with cracked edges mismatched chairs and exposed pipe there is love i have never in my life seen a chapter start off more beautifully i was like i know exactly where we're at i immediately was in this home with devon i could envision his mother praying I imagine the devout black mother in despair in her life still praying to God for answers, for love, and for all the things that she needs. Praying to God simply on faith. I know those black mothers. She works two jobs. She's barely home because she's working two jobs because she's a single mother trying to raise these three black boys. I can't do anything but applaud his mother and I was so worried about her throughout this text because Devon was so scared of her finding out about his sexuality which I will get to in a second but I was so scared that she would prove him right and when he finally broke down and was like hey ma I'm gay and she was like I know I was like they always know first of all I there is one way to read that of like Mom, I'm gay. Oh, honey, we all know. But then there is also a, a son vulnerable coming to his mother, finally coming out to his mother and her, her having to be like, honey, yes, I know. But also I know because you went through a tra traumatic experience that you don't even remember. Again, I will get through that in a second. But I also want to talk about the discussion surrounding Devon's sexuality. The fact that in his neighborhood, he could be attacked and beaten and killed because of his sexuality is so heartbreaking and so sad and so I wanted to cry this whole time but then adding on to that his blackness and his queerness she had Maka had mentioned like when he when she checked Jamie being like that's a stereotype of like only artsy like choir not yeah well sure let's go with choir choir musical theater boys on, they're all gay and football players can't be like we all know that stereotypes and Chiamaka checked Jamie for that and then she goes but also I'm questioning how what surprises me about Devon being gay is that he's black that to me seemed like a commentary on the fact that there's a common argument within the black community when it comes to queerness as it shows up in black men and it's as though a black man being gay 
is a threat to masculinity, black as uh, a threat to the strong black man. I wasn't expecting that to actually be covered because I've read very few books that have actually been on the perspective of someone looking into it, checking their privilege of thinking, duh, black men, presumably strong black men are gay as well. Like they can also be gay. I also want to mention Devon and Andre's relationship because that is something that really broke my heart. And it, this scene is the one that happened after Ace's text came out that Devon was visiting Andre more often, kind of like questioning Andre's sexuality. And Andre had him thrown out of his home. This is the scene of Devon being beaten. The fact that Farida combined him being beaten in present day by the gang that Dre is a part of with the memory of the first time Dre told him he loved him. I'm surprised actual tears did not come out at this time. But I was just like, I feel, I literally wrote, I feel so broken after this scene. Because one, there is that comparison of God, I feel so light with the light, the happy lightness of but being in love with your best friend and the joy that comes with the first time you tell each other, I love you, versus the lightness that comes from being beaten unconscious. The, the juxtaposition of being beaten for, because although Dre later states that like, you weren't beaten because you were gay, you're being beaten because you have to be jumped out of selling drugs like you're not selling drugs anymore so you got to get jumped out that's not what this is depicting this is depicting there are dangers that comes with being queer in these neighborhoods there are dangers that come with being a gay black boy in a community that does not accept that the community that is violent towards those like you this although he's being beaten because he was getting jumped out of from selling drugs, that being associated with the first time Dre told him I, I loved you, that's not you being beaten because you're getting jumped out from selling drugs. That's you being beaten because of your queerness. That's you being beaten because you are gay. This is a hard subject. This is a danger and it can be a dangerous subject. It's heartbreaking, but it is a heartbreak that I needed to read. I am a straight cis black woman and yeah, I have my instances where I am marginalized, but being queer isn't one of them. I really appreciated reading this scene because it brought, it woke me back up to how dangerous it still it is and still can be to just express your sexuality and express who you truly are. And all of that happened and Devon hadn't even expressed that yet. It just that toppled on with Ace's outing him and Ace's talking about him and Andre's relationship added to that conversation. And I, again, am just so amazed. I also would like to mention that I never once liked Jamie, not even a little bit. Not, not even, we were introduced to him and I was like, he seems off. There's something up with him. And then he broke Chiamaka's little heart. And I was like, don't, I really don't like this about the, him. But when Chiamaka and Jamie went to the candy store and the, I don't even remember what it was, but the candy ended up in Chiamaka's pocket and the candy store owner was like yelling at Chiamaka and coming at her face and she was like, you're a liar, you're a thief. Granted, from anyone looking in, yeah, she stole, but... Jamie's bitch ass thanking him for what? I don't understand why Jamie had to thank the clerk. I don't get it. Like, I mean, I do get it because you're a part of Aces, but also I was ready to fight. Like that solidified me hating Jamie because I said, what the fuck you, did you just thank him? Oh, hell no. Also, one thing I absolutely loved about Chiamaka's character is that sis 
was so determined and so smart and so amazing from the get-go. Tia Maka said, head perfect is icing on the cake. It tells universities like Yale that I care about Nevis, which I do, and that I'm a leader, which I am. I'm more than qualified for head perfect. I said, tell us about it then, good sis. Go off black girl. She said, I am black excellence. Here, I am better than all them, all these people around me. Yeah, I'm that bitch. I'm ahead of them. I'm the leader. I, I lead them. Um, And then I was like, look at me relating to this good sis because she goes, even though I know I shouldn't care, it annoys me that when girls know what they want and how they're going to get it, they seem they're seen as cocky but guys who know what they want they're confident or strong the reason I should be head perfect is because I earned it you are that bitch you have worked hard for this and you do deserve it don't let anyone tell you otherwise granted we now know sis wasn't leading like she thought she was because this whole organization that is Nevis Academy oh my god wow <laughs> wow the commentary on institutional racism as it works its way into our school systems was beautiful but let's go back to chiamaka real quick because sis said this is who i am and i am that bitch. i said go off sis i am so proud of you oh i love her so much so then now, granted, Chiamaka was not great at the beginning. I never hated Chiamaka. I never disliked her character. But there was definitely times where I was like, okay, your determination is blinding you to a lot of things. You're so focused on your goals and getting to Yale and becoming a doctor that you are really drinking the Kool-Aid of white supremacy. And... That's just basically her, the way that she used everyone to get to the top, um, all that thing, all that stuff. But it also, of course, with her using people um, that deserve to be used because they were trying to kill her. So I don't care that she was using the white people for to get ahead in life. Yeah, I just loved that Chiamaka was so determined and I love and yeah that determination kind of led to some like morally gray instances but I feel as though she was still kept her morals like she mentioned a quite a few times like who they see and even like my thoughts sometimes aren't who I really am like I'm just this nerdy kid that had to put so many layers in front of me so that I am protected because I didn't have friends before. I was getting made fun of before as the only black girl. And I don't want to be that again. And I, I just, I love that. Because again, I have been one of few black kids in my school. I have been the only black kid in my honors courses. I have, I mean, I can go on and on about how isolating that experience is and what it's like, but Truly, reading this book, Chiamaka had a down pack. Like, I definitely had experiences of putting up as many barriers to me as possible to protect who I truly was inside in order to survive in the world that I was in, which was a predominantly white school, a predominantly white neighborhood, a predominantly white environment. I needed to protect myself and that required barriers. It was then that I was like, okay, um, I hate this because you're getting asked these weird questions and you're being kind of treated as though you were this like zoo exhibit and it sucks. And so you do what you can to like fit in, but that also includes hiding parts of yourself. And so yeah, I never hated Chiamaka's character. Um, at most, I was like, ooh, this is morally gray. And it's this way because her outer layer is horns and and spikes. Like she's gonna get you before you get her. And I I understand that. I was I was never really a mean person. I was more like Devon when it came to like outward. Um I wasn't a loner by any means. But I definitely was, I definitely submitted to being like more quiet and laid back until I reached senior year 
much like I mean I didn't have an aces senior year but I did have this like awakening moment where I was like this institution is messed up and I'm not gonna let it bring me down and so getting to read that also happening with Chiamaka so close to the timeline that it happened for me was almost like an outer body experience and yep you know tears came but again it didn't come when I was reading the book it came when I was talking about the book or reading the author's notes so that was just so strange oh yes another line from Chiamaka is oh, this hit home she said I don't straighten my hair because I hate it I straighten it because everyone else hates it for me they ask me, what are you? And I want to be sarcastic and tell them human, but I don't. I tell them that I'm Italian and Nigerian. They raise their eyebrows at the Italian part, like they are surprised whiteness can produce me. Some days it really bothers me and other days it doesn't. So first of all, that part where she was like, I don't straighten my hair because I hate it. I straighten it because everyone else hates it for me. I said, sis, go off. Same. I didn't start wearing my natural hair until junior year really senior year of high school and that was because it, the one instance that I had my natural hair in school it was in middle school and literally a girl came up to me and was like why do you wear your hair like that and I was like what do you mean and she was like you shouldn't you really shouldn't wear your hair like that like it's so weird and I was like what do you mean I shouldn't wear my hair like that? Like, this is my natural hair. And granted, at this time, my hair was in a ponytail. Like, it wasn't like it's this nice mane in front of you, this beautiful crown in front of you. It was in a ponytail for every day because I didn't know how to really do my hair. And she's like, why do you wear your hair like that? You should really wear it the, other, the way you always do, which is straightening it. And I, like, that particular person I knew only really talked to, like, popular kids and didn't really have an opinion that was their own and so I really felt like kids were talking about me and my natural hair and I was just like never doing this again I'm gonna go ahead and just straighten this all the time and avoid the question because at this time I was even in track and field and one of my coaches was like what did you do your hair and I was like what it and she was like oh and then what did you do to it and I was just like wet it and then you like twist it and take out the twist and she was just like oh really and it just does that and I was like I don't want to I'm a child, ma'am, and I don't feel like answering your questions. Google it. You have Google at your fingertips. It comes with your phone. Google it. I'm not your whole encyclopedia on blackness and my hair. Like, ugh. But then when Chiamaka said, this is another instance of Farida's writing depicting a challenging and a heartbreaking moment beautifully like this again felt like poetry to me <clears throat> she said they asked me what are you and i want to be sarcastic and tell them human but i don't i tell them that i'm italian and nigerian they raise their eyebrows at the italian part like they are surprised whiteness can produce me some days it really bothers me and other days it doesn't I They raise their eyebrows at the Italian part like they are surprised whiteness can produce me. I'm not surprised by the eloquence, but also, you ever read something and you're like, wow, I've thought that, but I never thought it that eloquently. Like you, like you read it and you're like, the person that wrote this truly is on another level than I am. And that is what I, that is what this, this did to me. I was like, because that's exactly what it is. It is a, it's a, when a person is mixed and they favor more their black parent, it's like, what are you? Are you, wow, you're part white? And granted, my mama's black, my daddy's black. I'm fully black and I have gotten questions of what are you black yeah but what are you black and black like my mom is black and my dad is black there's I don't feel like there's a question of what my what I am but the fact that you're continuously prodded and pro like what are you trying to figure out what it is that you could probably possibly be as though you're some like 
foreign thing as though you're some alien. Like Chiyamaka said, I'm a human. Leave me alone. Get out my face. So yeah, there was definitely a ton of instances like that where Chiyamaka's annoyances were my annoyances. Like I was like, been there, sis. Yep, been there too. <laughs> Especially when it came to like Jamie's character, like what I hated most about Jamie's character is that I knew Jamie's growing up. Like at the beginning when he, like we know he slept with um, Chiyamaka and basically used her. And I was like, so basically you're going to date the white girl in public and then sleep around with Chiyamaka, the black girl in private because God forbid someone know that you'd be interested in her. What great shame is it that you chose this black girl over the white girl, even though we all know the black girl better? Because Chiyamaka, once again, if you did not get the memo, is that bitch. The depiction of mental health in this book was also so beautifully and delicately crafted that I truly appreciated it. And especially as it pertained to Devon's story, I could tell that just throughout the entire book I could tell that Farida really cared about the topic she was discussing and making sure she did everything she could to present them as true and as impactful as she could like <laughs> this truly is a beautiful text that I can tell took a lot of work and care and dedication and that's truly what I appreciate the most about this book. I was so surprised that Chiyomaka and Devon both had instances of not being able to remember things and they both had memory issues and yet they weren't related to each other at all. Like Chiyomaka had been drugged versus Devon going through this traumatizing situation of having his first kiss and being beaten for it and then feeling as though he deserve to die for liking who he liked. I appreciate, I liked the realistic depiction of all of this. Devon's relationship with his mother felt very realistic to how mental health is discussed in oftentimes in the black community. It's not really is the thing. Things are often not discussed, which means that they are just like swept under the rug, even if they're not actively swept under the rug the simple fact of not talking about it is sweeping it under the rug and causing it to be a greater issue than it is and then as time passes it's going to be greater and greater of an issue i felt that depiction between the relationship between yvonne and his mother was very felt very accurate to some things i've witnessed in life and i really appreciated that like the pacing for that part of the narrative was so gradual and it being that slowly done made it even more beautiful, if that makes sense. Like, it's one thing to present it right in front of people, but that's not accurate to the actual experience of having depression. It's at least not when you are in a community where you just have to, like, grind in the dirt and work your two jobs without complaints and pray and things will get better. and the discussion of being poor in this low-income, under-resourced community, having a mother really devout in her faith, and also struggling with your own sexuality, and how that all works together to then impact your mental health and presents itself in your depression and your suicidal tendency or your suicidal thoughts and ideation beautiful just beautiful if anyone can make something heartbreaking and heart aching and devastating beautiful it is miss farida abike Iemere. i hope you all read this book and enjoy it and love it as much as i do it is a truly important book with truly important topics i don't know how i feel about this just sitting down talking um book talk um, going on, I kind of wanted to do something additional as I was like reviewing the book, but I couldn't really think of it. So if you have any ideas of like something you would like to see me do as I talk about books, please let me know. 
Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Go ahead and press the bell notification if you would like to be notified whenever I upload. Also, please do leave a comment down below. We can discuss the book some more because listen, I, got, I could talk about this book for days. And yeah, all my socials and everything will be linked below as they always are. Please, let's stay in touch with each other. I love talking about books if you cannot tell by however long this ends up being because it's going to be a long one, I feel like. Yeah. Bye, guys.